All right, sorry for the abrupt cutoff there, but for some reason my uh, video card crashed in, you know, playing Darkest Night there, so... Let's just get back to it. I saved the game. Basically, at, at, as soon as I saw it happen, I knew it was like, you know, crashed, so... You're not missing anything. That's the least, you know, nice thing to say. It crashed, but you're gonna, not you're gonna miss anything. Oops, you know what? We actually want Dave's save. Man, I'm, I might have screwed that up. Let's just go back to the main menu. Loads in everything, and good. We're back where we are. Where we are. All right. So um, she had her event, and unfortunately now she has to take an action here to do stuff. It's unfortunate, but well. Um, I think with her, she's just going to um, let's see here. I can't handle this event or anything, so we're just going to have to have her, I guess, do searches. I guess. That's, you know, what she's just going to do. So let's just make her, just, you know, hide, I guess, to um, get everything back here. And that'll be her turn. Next, the wizard here. So the wizard, you know, I, I guess I probably should have sent him because then he would be able to do something, but oh well. Um... That's going to get completed, unfortunately, there's stuff I can do about it. I guess we're going to send the treasure chest over to the scout here, actually. I want to get her to draw more powers, basically, to get, you know, them out of the way. There's a escape route, so now she basically is even better at looting. There's basically 10 power cards in total, by the way, so right after she gets that final card, she'll basically have all her powers, the, um, the uh, scout. Okay, let's just go here with the um, event cards, I guess. Alright, Sloppy Search. We have a roll of dice, and if we get a 6, we gain secrecy. If we get 1 or 3, we lose a grace, or we lose a secrecy. So we're going to lose a grace or a secrecy on the wizard here. Let's just drop his secrecy down, I guess, to uh, 3. It'll make it a little bit more detectable, but I think he's in you know, better shape than a mercenary, so we're going that front, I think. Now, for his turn, um, what I actually could do with him is actually teleport him over to the forest to, like, you know, get secrecy back up, and then we can deal with, like, you know, uh, the Dark Fog. That's something I could do with him. I could also use the um, his room of nullification to nullify the zombies over here, and then people could enter here to try and deal with these damn zombies in a bit. That's something I might want to do, because the zombies are going to be an issue, as is the, as the Oblivion thing. Actually, not playing Oblivion might be better, wouldn't it? You know what? Let's just go here. We're going to take the crows off. Put them back here. And we're just going to activate his, like, rune nullification on the um, Oblivion. So, it's no longer an issue. And that's his turn. And the Crusader, he's basically, you know, all healed up. He's not, like, entirely secret, but that's fine. Um, let's just have him march over to the village. And because... Yep. He's just going to march over to, um, the village here. And because, like, you know, he's, like, you know, starting in monster, he doesn't draw an event or anything like that, which is good. And we're going to have him elude, I guess, these, like, you know, zombies as, as like, you know, his thing here. So, he goes here. He got four, he loots one zombie. He got five, he loots the other zombie. He doesn't have to worry about the Oblivion because, you know, the um, the wizard basically nerfed it, so his turn is done. And that's basically that. Alright, so this phase is, is going to fire off. Um, because, like, you know, I can't do anything about this blight, it just, it just, you know, it fires off. So we just do this. 
And we'll draw a map card. In a village, there's now spies. Not good. Any secrecy that, you know, my guys are just hiding here, it's you now basically going to get lost. So, not good. Alright, darkness goes up by 1 to 8. And now the necromancer rolls. And by the way, this guy goes up to free secrecy because he moved. Alright, the necromancer rolled a 1. So he's going to march over to the castle. He actually didn't see the, um, you know, the mercenary because, you know, he's a big dummy. He's going to create a new blight in the castle for these guys to deal with. So he's going to create a lich. Not good. Liches are pretty bad. They basically have, you know, five five to fight. All right, new player turn. Um, I think over here in uh, you know this section over here, the village. Um, I really need to deal with the like you know the zombies and other stuff that are happening here, as well as oblivion because that's a really annoying. Let's have the uh, the crusade here go first. So he's going to draw this event, and he's got another quest dropping up. It's startling news. I have to add a, a marker to the quest currently uh, to a quest to, to a currently in play. If there's no quest in play, then set draw a quest and roll one to determine its location. So we have to basically get another quest, basically. We'll see what rest going in a moment. And roll the dice. It's a four. Four goes to the castle, and it's tribute. An unusually savvy remnant has collected its own bad dead servants and has demanded tribute from nearby farmers. Face him in combat. Alright, so action. I basically have to fight this guy in combat with a 5, and each success is basically a 1, so basically you can be in 1, and if I fail, I basically take a hit, and if I complete again, artifact. Pretty cool. cool. Alright, so, there's a quest in play, right there. Another quest to basically show off. So, the Crusader is basically over here in the village. He's got a couple zombies and spies to deal with. I'm going to make him try and kill one of these zombies, basically. So, let's just get a couple of these uh, out here, the dice. And he's going to spend Wrath, to basically, to try and deal with the, um, the zombies, basically. So, let's get to it. Poof! He failed to kill a zombie, which basically means that he has to take a hit. So, he goes down to five. Really, really bad. And worst of all, because he basically spent that... Oh, he doesn't actually exhaust Wrath. That's good to know. Alright, so basically he takes a hit. Now he has to basically roll against like the zombies. So he has to roll dice basically to um, hit or elude, I guess. And in this case, he's going to just elude him. So poof. He elude one zombie. And elude the other zombie. Now, because he's got the spies here, he loses his secrecy. So he's going to go back down to two secrecy. That's not really good to have happen, but oh well. Alright, now, um, I'll note that over here in the uh, the castle, I got a Lich and I got a quest over here, and these guys are also going to get, get detected, the, um, uh, what you call it, the wizard and the, uh, the scout. First things first, let's get, you know, the scout to basically do her thing, I guess. She's going to throw down shelters, which will basically make it so events don't happen this turn on the, um, the castle. And we could use treasure mask, but we're not going to worry about that. She is going to, I guess, draw one to basically, you know, she's starting her turn now, so we can do this. She got six, so she gets up a grace up to four. And now this is something I don't have to do. It's a bonus action, right? So good. Um, at this point, I'm thinking that I, w I may want to basically drag this guy, the mercenary, back over here. I actually shouldn't have done her thing, but I guess we're not going to do that right now. Alright, so I'll note that um, I can actually probe the defense of his licks to make him a little bit like you know weaker. So, I could do that. Let's do that. We're going to make the licks a little bit weaker. So it's now down to a 4 to licks. Um, he, she's also got, let's see here. 
We're actually going to use Trailblazer right now on, like, um, the Crusader, I guess. Well, I guess I can't because he, he had his turn. I really should use Trailblazer on the Crusader, basically drag him over here so that, like, you know, the Necrozzer wouldn't go back to him because the Crusader basically has only, like, you know, two secrecy, which is not good. Though I can actually avoid, you know, him being drawn there if I had the Wizard lose the secrecy, which is I might just do, you know, not worry about that. I might just try and, like, hold him here. Alright, let's have him, let's see here. I want her to try and fight that uh, Lich, I think, is what I'm going to do with her. It's not the most optimal thing to do with her, but... I could try and get rid of the Lich, basically. So, she's going to try and fight the Lich. See how she does. She kills the Lich, amazingly enough. So, Lich goes bye-bye. Uh, Lich is where? Right there. So, that's her turn done. She basically kills the Lich. Alright, so... The wizard's also here in this turn, or this place. Um, basically, he can like probe, uh, he can like you know, it'll probe defensively matter the thing is gone. So we'll put that back here. He doesn't have to suffer events, so he'll basically skip the event. And I think we're going to make him do is try and deal with this event right here, the uh, tribute. So let's have him basically make lightning strike go down. Actually, you know what? Until I get the success, I should, like, you know, keep that up. It only exhausts it if you succeed, right? So if he fails, he fails. He's going to try and spend a secrecy. And I should note, by the way, that she spent a secrecy, too. To try and kill that, like, you know, that, um... That Reverend over here. And then, like, you know, we'll basically kill this quest right off. So let's see if we can do it. He does it. So, he kills the quest. And he gets an artifact or his war or reward for basically, you know, beating him off. So what artifact does he get? He's got wind chimes. Refresh one power at the start of your turn. So you can do that next turn, basically. But this is uh, now off, basically, for him. So that's basically his turn done. And let's see here. Um, the mercenary is basically, you know, having a, a ball, I guess. I want the mercenary, I think, to, um... Hmm. You know, the mercenary is actually the detectable one. Not like the wizard or, like, you know, the, the crusader. I could draw him over here. But, you know what we're going to do? I think we're going to have the mercenary just hop all over here, I think. I think we'll do that with him. Sure. We'll have the mercenary just hop over to, uh... The castle. Oh, yeah, so I'll draw an event because he's not with that um, that group over there. And this actually goes over here. So we're going to draw an event for the mercenary. And he got Anathema. So he's going to lose a grace. Not optimal because he's not got a whole lot of grace basically at this point. But whatever. He's going to lose a grace. He's going to march over here. He'll gain his secrecy back. He's now up to two. That's his turn. Alright, so that's basically everyone's turn done again. Uh, we move this back up to 9. We're getting close to 10. 10 is when stuff gets a little bit more hairy for, it for your characters, so... It's bad. Now, Necrozzer draws a 4. He does detect the guys here, and they're all close to him, so... He's going to stay in to say hi to these guys, I guess. Uh, I can't remember if I, if I took away their secrecy, because the Necrozzer was present to scout in the... Um, I, I didn't. So let's just drop these guys down to five. Because the Necrons are present, they uh, they got detected, right? So they're not one. So basically, Necrons stays here. He's going to create a new blight in the castle, an evil presence. So basically, when eluding like um, in this, uh, in events. Um, it's going to, like, you know, result in, like, you know, one less dice. So, Scout's going to have a little bit higher time over here now. 
Alright, that's basically it for the for Necromancer's turn. Nothing else happens. Now, because like, you know, um, I guess these guys are having any issues and all that. I'm going to get, let's see here. Uh, I'm tempted to have the Crusader try again and like trying to dispatch one of those like you know blights over here in the in the, like, the village. So let's have him go first. And he has Twilight. So if Darkness is basically zero to fourteen, you exhaust the power or lose one secrecy. Um, to be honest, this guy's so low secrecy anyways. I'm not sure it's really a big issue if he loses secrecy. I don't want him losing secrecy that much, to be honest. I think we'll exhaust the power for this guy right now. So, let's exhaust Providence right now. And I'll keep his secrecy for a moment. Alright, so, the Crusader. I think we're going to make him um, basically try and deal with the, uh, you know, the, uh, the zombies or the Oblivion or the spies again. Oh, you know what? He's actually going to go down to uh, zero secrecy anyways, so we're not going to do that. We're just going to make him lose the secrecy. What we're going to do with the Crusader, we're going to spend one life and one secrecy to basically drop him down to zero. He's not being secret anymore, this Crusader. He's basically completely out in the open. He's going to try and kill the zombies yet again. And this time he got one. So he got one of these zombies out of the way. So... We're no longer on, like, you know, uh, you know, terror watch in the, in the village. So, one of, the, one of those things are gone. Now he has to loot these zombies. So, he has to roll one dice to do that. He fails too, so he takes a hit. And the spies, the spies will basically take away his secrecy, but he's already at zero, so it doesn't matter. So, he's basically been detected, but that's fine. Alright, so the rest of these guys are over here with the Necromancer. They're all going to lose one secrecy, so I'm just going to do that before I forget. So they're like, you know, one, lots, and then zero. Oh, that's not good. So the, uh, the wizard got detected, and that means he's going to be fighting a Necromancer in a moment, unfortunately for him. But he does re refresh this as a service turn, which is good for him. You know what, let's, just, let's have the wizard go first, I guess, because it's not like, you know, um, the uh, scout can help him at the moment. Or actually, you know what, I actually could make him... Here's something I know about items. I can actually transfer this item over to the scout right now. And she can actually use this at the start of her turn to basically cause one of her, like, powers to be refreshed. She's gonna refresh shelter, I think. So we don't experience events, because, um, basically... The event is basically, you know, like, you know, the Necromancer is present and you fight him, or you draw an event card. So let's just refresh this power with the, um, you know, the scout. And I'll drop it right here. And I'll draw, you know, a dice here. She doesn't get her, like, you know, HP, but that's fine. So both, both of these things are, like, you know, uh, used on the scout now. So, basically, she's got this card down. The, the Necromancer can't detect her. Um, or like anyone else here. For her turn, she's going to use blind spots on the mercenary, I think. And this will raise the um, the, mer the mercenary's like secrecy up to four. Do I want to do that, actually? Yeah, I probably want to do that, because then the mercenary can like do other stuff. So, for her action, she's going to use blind spots on the mercenary. That will cause him to go up to four secrecy. And that's her turn. She basically made this guy less detectable. Alright, so, the mercenary could possibly go next, I guess. Now, he's on this place because, you know, I basically brought him here to basically get his secrecy up. Um, I could move him over here to try and deal with this stuff, but... You know what? I think I'd rather have the Crusader stay over there to try and kill some more stuff. And... Yeah, you know what? I'm not really making much sense here, am I? Um, we're going to have the mercenary. Let's just have him hide. 
He's just going to hide and refresh his powers. That's all he's going to do. So he hides and refreshes his powers. This goes up to 5. Oh, yeah, it goes up to 5 because he can hide and go up to 5. And that's his turn. Alright, the wizard. Um, so the wizard basically is hiding out here. Uh, the evil presence is kind of annoying, but... You know, I'm, I'm not really going to worry about it right now, I don't think. We're just going to have him... I'm, I'm tempted to actually have him teleport to the wizard. I can have him like teleport back to the monastery so he can like, you know, start getting like, you know... Well, I suppose he's already at his free, so... He's at full grace, to be honest. Um, let's have the wizard just like, you know, try and like, you know... Well, here's the thing. Um, basically when you get to 10, like, you know, uh, darkness, that's when like, you know, the Necrestor starts creating two blights at the location. So he's basically going to create like, you know, um, two blights here at, at the end of his turn. Regardless of what he's going to do. He's going to create one blight if I don't kill this blight, and he's going to create two if I, if I just don't do anything. I think with this guy, we're just going to make him search right now. So we'll have the wizard just do a, a quick search. And it fails. So nothing happens. He's done. Alright, so that's basically that. Um, this guy is basically at zero secrecy right now, so it doesn't matter what the Necromancer does. He's going to stay here. And because there's only one um, like you know, Blight here, he's just going to create another Blight. That's all he's going to do, the Necromancer. So we're not going to borrow a drawing card. This can go back over here. And at the castle, we're going to have a Shroud get created. Shrouds are pretty bad. They actually protect other, like, Blights, so... Basically, that's going to protect protect the Evil Presence. So I have to kill a Shroud before I can kill the, the, the Blight. Or the, um, the... I have to kill this Shroud before I, can, before I can kill the Evil Presence in this place now, or any other Blights to come here in, in after that. Okay, it's a new turn. These guys are gonna have their like their um secret they're like you know seriously go down to free. And he hits, so he's going down to four. And let's see here. Let's have the crusader go first, I think. Now here's something I know about Trailblazer. Um, any hero in any adjacent location may travel to your location as a free action during the action step of their turn. Does that matter if I do it before or after, do you think? Because what I might do with this guy, I might try and kill off like the zombies in here. Or I might try and kill the, the, the spies or the oblivion. Killing off oblivion would make me lose a turn though, so that'd be bad. Um... Let's just try and kill his spies with the um, with the Crusader here. He's going to spend one of his like graces, and I, I have to get the event first. So we'll do that first. So a, sh a, a shambling horror basically pops up. Um, it's compared to secrecy. If he's got no secrecy. He's going to have to deal with a Slayer. That's pretty bad. He's got to roll a six or a five in order to avoid getting a hit. Uh, hmm. I guess we're gonna roll, you know, for like, just one dice here for for like an evasion. He's gonna try get try and get a five or more. He got two, so he's gonna take a hit. All right, so the Crusader. Um, I'm spend to spend one like grace to like you know fight the spies. I think that's what we're gonna do. So we'll have like a dice, dice, and a dice for the spies. And let's just roll this to try and kill those spies. We did. We got rid of spies. So they're out of the way. Now, because the zombies are still active here, he has to evade them, right? So, roll one dice. He got four. So he evades the zombies. He takes no more for damage. His turn is done. So, we're basically down to two blights here. That's pretty decent. That's fine. Um, over here in the castle... I actually want to kill the Shroud, I think, because um, basically the thing about the Shroud is that it's going to, um, how can I put this? It'll basically make it harder to kill other Blights until it's removed. And, 
you know, I could have like our blights that would be really bad here to basically deal with. So, one of these guys should deal with that blight basically. And this guy's has sports war refresh, so it's probably going to be the mercenary. You know, what? I'm actually tempted to get this going on right now. Let's just like you know use our uh, this thing here to basically like you know drop down shelters. And we're going to transfer this over to the mercenary right now, I think. And he's going to basically use it for his turn. So we're transferring this over to the mercenary. So he's going to roll for, like, you know, life. He gets a six. So he's going to get his grace up to three. And that's going to get, like, you know, exhausted on him now. Basically, I moved this over to him. This is something about items. You can basically move them around all you want. So while the Super Lear is, like, basically on his uh, spot with three guys, all three of these guys make use of it, you know, if they want to, basically, which is nice. Alright, so they can't draw events because this thing's here. Um, I want this guy to go after that that shroud, right? So let's see here. I could use probe defense, but I've already used it, so this guy's just gonna fight it, fight it by himself. He's gonna roll two dice. Because of military style here. He fails to, so he's basically gonna roll another dice for persistence. He has to roll a 4 or higher on this one in order to, like, you know, kill it. He did. So, persistence goes down, the shroud goes away. And the Necronus Nic is going to create another shroud, uh, another blight there, but he also only going to create one. So, uh, basically, as long as there's, like, a blight here that I don't really care about, in this case, I don't really care about the, uh, the evil presence because this is going to make it hard to elude. Anyways, he's also got Spoils of War, so we're going to exhaust this. He'll get a treasure chest. And you know what? Let's actually get the treasure chest for him and he'll draw power. So, he draws a power for himself. He's got exotic style. So, you can fight with free dice, and if you fail, you suffer uh, the failure effect twice. So, basically, this is like, you know, military style, except I'm basically, like, you know, taking a greater risk. Not good, but, you know, not bad for, you know, something to have. His turn's done. Now it's basically the scout's turn. To do something, I think. Um, so let's see here. I could use escape routes, basically do stuff to like get more, like you know, uh, get her like secrecy up more. And I think with her right now. It probably makes sense for me to make her hide so she can get, get her powers back. But she does have, like, you know, treasure maps here. And the wizard's also got his turn, so let's use that instead. We're going to use Lenar's search time here. So we're in the castle, we're going to do more searching. The treasure map basically drop right here. And all heroes basically are going to get an extra dice. So you get some free dice again. Now, this is something that some players can play about in this game. It's possible to have like scenarios where you're basically camping a lot. In this case, we're just camping the castle because, um, because of it basically of like the, the like you know things here. Like she can use shelters constantly, basically as a result of like you know this like you know artifact she got, wind chimes. Doesn't always happen like this, but you know sometimes it does, and then like you have these very boring games. But oh well. All right, we got ourselves a six, a four, a three. So that's all resources. You know, that's all enough. So basically, we draw the map card. Map card. Map card. What does she get? Alright, she got herself. A key! Okay, so, keys are actually what we need to win, actually, in this game. You need to get, like, a bunch of keys in order to get artifacts. Artifacts are, like, right here. Holy Relic, basically. Holy Relic. Holy Relic, Holy Relic. There's not a castle, but, you know, basically you want to get these Holy Relics at some point, so you need to get those keys at some point. You need to get a total free in order to get a Holy Artifact, and then with a Holy Artifact, you can fight the Necromancer. Um, next, she gets a Supply Cache. And, of course, that means that she basically draws two Power Cards. There's actually only one here, so she just gets this automatically. So she basically got her Power Cards. So you got Patrol Roots. Um, basically, Blights have no effect. Pretty good. 
Basically, if I did that, I could attack the other plate if I want to, which is decent. Alright, and then she's also got treasure chest. We're going to give the treasure chest to the mercenary so we can draw in our power, I guess. So let's just draw in our power automatically for him. And he draws Masterwork Blade, so he says, one extra dice and fights. Really useful, because that means he can actually get more dice to fight with. And that's her turn. Now, the wizard here is also going to do a search because, you know, the thing's up. So he's going to have two dice for it. And he gets a five and a five. So let's get the master, you know, the stuff going for him as well. I should probably get him, him some powers. Because he can do, get some good stuff too. So, he got himself a ball of magic. So that's right over here. And he also got... A supply cache, so he's going to get a power. He's going to draw two right here. And he's going to keep one of these. So he's got arcane energy. Exhaust it any time you refresh all your other powers. That's pretty useful because basically it means that he can, like, you know, not have to rest as much. And rune of interference. So this is like another rune that he could have. Basically, he can only have one of these on at one time. But this one, basically, roll one. And where, where a blight is created, um, it, when, a, when a blight is created, it is destroyed if you roll a 6. So, basically, whenever, like, blights get created, you can try and automatically destroy them. Pretty useful, but not as useful as Arcane Energy, so we're going to take that one. And this thing just go back and under his deck. Alright, so, my guys are getting more power, power is basically as all of stuff. Uh, that goes right there. Alright, it's Necromancer's turn. So, uh, I forgot to move this to 10, but is it, it's now basically at 11. Ne Necromancer's going to create a new blight here in, like, you know, the castle. Again, this guy's at zero, like, you know, secrecy, so he's going to basically move to the wizard, and wizard's right next to him, so he's just going to stay right there. Or actually, no, that's not right. Um, it's worth knowing if, like, um, you basically have, like, you know, the teleport thing here. The Necromancer treats like all these places as, like the equal spaces, so he could go after the Crusader here, randomly. I don't choose where he goes. I should actually probably roll a dice to see where he goes. Let's say if he rolls 1 to 3, he'll go to the Crusader. If he rolls one, um, uh, 4 to 6, he'll move to the Wizard here. Alright, so he's going to stay here with the Wizard, that's fine. So he's going to create a new uh, Blight. I'm not sure if this is it. I don't think this was it. He's going to create in the castle of Vampire the fight. Vampires are, of course, never like bad to fight, so they're not too bad, but they're you know still frightening. And of course, this is basically going to be exhausted over here, and this will be exhausted over here. All right, so new turn. Uh, because these guys stayed here, they lose secrecy, so she's going to go down to two. He's going to go down to three. Which doesn't lose any because he wasn't, like, you know, really doing anything. Um, at this point, I think I'm going to get this guy to run away, the mercenary. But before he does, I'm going to get her to basically use the wind chime again to basically get shelter basically back up for events. Because why not? Makes sense. And then, let's see here. I could use escape routes right now to make her basically, like, you know, um, gain her thing up to default, but there's really no need for her to do just that, just yet. We're going to... I'm tempted to actually activate to make the vampire not be able to fight her. Because vampires have a might of six. They have to roll six to get rid of vampires. They're really tough to fight vampires. Um, let's have patrol routes go off. It's basically like, you know, the vampire can't, like, you know, do anything. So, it can't do anything. It, um, she doesn't have to worry about a lose or anything. She's, it's not going to matter to her. And then, let's have, um, let's just have her do a basic search. So, she always gets, like, two, uh, two dices for searching, so let's just do that.
All right, let's see what she gets. And she draws a waystone. That's useful. Waystones let you move around the map easily enough, so we'll grab one for her. And she also gets a treasure chest. So I can give another power to someone. And that's basically why, like, you know, I didn't move the mercenary first, because I could get a power that, you know, um, basically could be used by, like, you know, him. So let's just go over here and draw him in our power. And he gets Glories of War. So this is in our war power. You can only, like, do one on a Blight, but basically, exhaust after you destroy Blight to gain one uh, Grace. Basically, he can get his Grace back. And he can refresh his our powers. This is a really powerful one to have. Very good for him. Alright, so that's basically done for her turn. Next. So, I'm thinking at this point that, you know, I may want to move elsewhere because you're not going to get a lot of keys in the castle. You're going to get a lot of powers in the castle, but not really keys. I may want to move over here to the Dark Fog to start, like, clearing it up. So I might just do that with the wizard here. And by the way, he's got Ball of Magic. Ball of Magic basically lets you, um, where is it? You discard after a fight roll to add free dice to that roll. Basically, you can get a whole lot of dice basically to kill stuff. Really useful. So, I'm going to exhaust Teleport right now. As his action. Because he doesn't, he doesn't suffer a vent over here. And then he's going to jump over the wizard. To the forest. That's going to be his turn. Now, because he used Teleport, he gets two secrecy back, so he gets up to two secrecy as a result of that. Next. Um, the Crusader here, I think, he, he's still like over here in the village. Let's get him his, his event, so see what he does. He has to worry about a Mind Leech. So, uh, compared to a secrecy, he's got like, you know, no, no secrecy. So, he has to worry about a strong Mind Leech that's going to exhaust the power from him. If he fails this, like, dice roll. And he failed. So, one of his powers is going to get exhausted on him. Uh, let's see here. I don't want to exhaust Anointed because, like, you know, that'd be bad. So let's exhaust Providence, I think, over here. And next for him... I'm actually sort of getting concerned about his uh, his grace because it's starting to go down farther and farther. You know what? Let's actually not exhaust Providence. Well, hmm. You know what? It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to exhaust Providence because of a simple reason. I'm not going to keep him in the village any longer. He's going to move. And specifically, he's going to move back to the monastery for one secrecy. So that's his turn. He basically retreated back to the monastery so he can start praying again. And then the mercenary here. Um, on no day, he doesn't suffer like events, and because of patrol routes, he doesn't worry about the blights. But he's not going to stick around here any longer. So this stuff's going to go right here, just going right over right there. At this point, the mercenary is just going to leave, I think, at this point. He stayed here long enough. It's time for him to leave. Um, for his stuff, he's just going to march back over here, I think. So, the mercenary goes back over here. He gains one secrecy to resolve it. And he also has rolled dice to get his grace possibly up, which he did. So, that's his turn. Basically, gaining a uh, grace and a secrecy. Alright, basically it's Nick Ransom's turn again. Let's have him go up to 12. And he's going to draw his black dice. He rolls a 5. He's going to detect someone. Now, he can detect the lowest guy, right? So, basically, the wizard's at 2. He's over here. And the scout is at 2. So, he can detect either the scout or the wizard. So we might stay there or we might go to the wizard. 
So let's just see. I'm going to say if he draws one to three, he'll go to the, to the wizard. If he draws four to six, he'll stay at the scout. He's, he's going to stay at the scout. So he's going to create a new blight here on the castle, a skeleton. 